fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Cowboy Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope a steer because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You bet, Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you go power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'm Silver. Hooray! The Lone Ranger and Toto had turned their horses into dry bone flats, a stretch of desert which lay east of the Black Mountains in Arizona Territory. They were headed for the Apache Indian Reservations, where rumor had it that Chief Cochise was again making war medicine. Scanning the desolate landscape, the masked man observed, Tonto, it would be like Cochise to go on the war path now. Oh, why do you say that? Most of the soldiers who were on guard at the reservations have been sent south to the border to protect the towns there against a gang of outlaws known as the Zapalotes or vultures. It'd be plenty bad if Apaches and outlaws both make raids. Pull up, Tonto. Close oh, the window. Open that hole. What you see? Look at the hoof prints just ahead of us. Oh. Ah, two riders go by here a couple of days ago. Head for Black Mountain foothills. We got into several other trails like that this morning. All lead in the same general direction. Maybe gold rush going on. The men who are riding into the foothills should be warned of their danger. We'll follow the two who left these tracks. Monthiller! Get him up, scout! Several hours later, the Lone Ranger and Toto reached a point where the hoof prints mingled with those of many other horses, headed in the same direction. A little farther on, all of the tracks vanished into a small basin, known as the Red Kettle, from the color of the surrounding rocks. Seeing in the circumstances an indication of a prearranged and secret meeting in the basin, the masked man and Indian became suspicious. They dismounted, crawled to the edge of the rim rock, and peered down. After a brief silence, Tonto spoke. Kimasabi, yes. big camp down there, big gang round. But maybe some fellers sleep. Better we count horses. I've already counted them. There are 32. Some fellers Americans, some Mexicans. None got prospecting tools, but all got two, three guns. They may be the Zapalotes. Why them hide here? I doubt that they're hiding from pursuit. After doubling back into the United States from old Mexico, they probably met here for the purpose of making another raid. What them raid? All towns long way off. No wagon trains pass here. I'm not so sure about the wagon trains. A cutoff trail crosses Drybone Flats. Well, what we do about fellers down there? They're the border outlaws. It would be suicidal for us to ride in on them. The odds are more than 15 to 1 against us. Well, better we wait for night. 
Then creep down and listen to what them say. We waited too long as it is. Look across the kettle. Ah. Them guards. Them ride round this way in Rimrock. And they see us back to the horses. And now they may them rifles. Better we shoot back. No, they'll be all in all the range. Got out of city silver easy. Easy, easy color. Oh, 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 oh. Riding hard across the flats for the better part of an hour, the Lone Ranger and Toto made sure that they had outrun pursuit. Then through rain. Oh, 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 had a narrow escape. Now, now he's sure they're outlaws. There can be no doubt of that now. But it's a question whether we should center our attention on them or the Apaches. Me think outlaws more dangerous. So do I. Heavily armed and savage as they are, the bandits have the capacity to kill more innocent people than several hundred Indians. Uh, what we do? We ride to the cutoff trail and watch for wagon trains. It'll soon be dark. Wagons not move at night. That's true. But we'll be in a position to head off any we see tomorrow. One pillar. Come on, stop. That night, a combined train of freight and emigrant wagons stood in a circle at a point where the cutoff trail entered Drybone Flats. As campfires were being kindled, Cap Keller, the hired guide and captain of the train, rode away from the corral of heavy vehicles. Keller had said that he intended to scout around for signs of Indians, but he headed his horse straight into a cottonwood grove. From the shadows, a low voice hailed him. Senor El Capitan. Oh, 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 oh. That you, Pedro? Si, senor. It's good to meet you here. For many nights I have waited. I couldn't tell you the exact day that the wagons had reached Drybone Flats. Tell me, the gang ready for the job? Yeah, it's ready. We camp now in Red Kettle. Now look, are you sure that you and the other fellas savvy what you're to do? Oh, see, see, we are to roll the boulders into the far end of Broken Wheel Pass. Then attack the wagons from the sides and the rear. Now, one thing more, Pedro. I'll arrange to have my second in command lead the train into the pass. Kill him first of I all. myself will kill him. When will the wagons be there? Day after tomorrow. Hey, hey, somebody come. That may be Clay Rogers, my second in command, and the girl, Ellen Sayre. What shall I do? Hide, then slip back to the gang as soon as you can. See, I go. Adios. Oh, 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 oh. Easy, boy. We heard your voice, Cap. Who was here with you? Nobody, Clay. Just praying out loud for the folks in the wagon train. I do it every night. Ah. Captain, I believe you, even if Clay doesn't. I think it's wonderful how you've managed to lead us so far without having a bit of trouble. Come on, Ellen, let's go back to the wagons. I'll ride with the captain. Hey, get, get up there. Come get, on, up. get up there. Get up there. At sunrise the next morning, the wagon train rumbled into Drybone Flats. On the western skyline, toward which the long column of ox-drawn and canvas-covered Conestogas was headed, loomed the forbidding Black Mountains. Behind it, a vast cloud of desert dust hung in the still air. Riding abreast, Cap Keller, Clay Rogers, and Ellen Sayre led the train by half a mile. Captain, how far is it to the mountains? <laughs> Maybe Clay can tell you from his book learning. I know that beyond them lies California, the end of your job. Well, look, ahead. Two riders. Mass man and an engine. They're headed this way. <laughs> Pull up. Oh, 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 oh. We're friends, don't fire. They're making the peace sign. I've read of it. Oh, 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 oh. Keep your hands where they are. Very well. Who's the captain of the wagon train? I am, Cap Keller. Now, you explain yourself. Why are you wearing that mask? That has nothing to do with my presence here. Do you know that you're far off the main route to California? Yes, but we'll soon be back on it. Well, why did you lead the wagons into this cutoff? It's none of your business. Well, it's the business of the people on the train to know. What are you hiding, Cap? Not a confounded thing. Took you fellas on this cutoff trail because it saves a lot of miles. Then you'd better turn back and save a lot of lives. What do you mean, mister? The wagon train's in serious danger from two quarters. Two quarters? How's that? A large band of outlaws is now camped in Red Kettle. It isn't likely that the bandits would be there unless they planned to attack a wagon train. I don't believe it. And I'll loot yourself. You're trying to work some kind of trick on us. Why, of course he is. What's the other danger, mister? The Apaches may attack you before you can be ambushed by the outlaws. Oh, <laughs> you're loco. The engines have been right peaceable of late. Apaches never are at peace, as you must know if you're an experienced wagon master. They may be off their reservations at this moment. 
So uh, take my advice and turn back. Cap, we'd better do as the masked man says. Not on your tin type. Tonight we'll camp at Sweetwater Springs. Tomorrow we'll go on through Broken Wheel Pass. Captain Keller, a party of emigrants was massacred at those springs when the Apaches took the warpath last year. Broken Wheel Pass is an equally dangerous place. Cap, listen to the masked man. Don't take us into a trap. Clay, you're a coward. I am, if it's cowardly to think of you and the other women and the children. You can go back if you want to, Rogers. Nobody's keeping you here. Don't worry, mister. We'll be turning back as soon as the other men hear what you told us. I hope so. Let's go, Toto. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. As the masked man and Indian turned their horses and headed back up the trail, Cap Keller suddenly lifted the Winchester 73, which had been resting on the pommel of his saddle. The brass-bound barrel swung into line with the Lone Ranger's back. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's what the happy, happy people have to say. Eating our Wheaties and the do, 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 and okay. Okay. Sure, take champion Bob Cousy, who can really make a basketball do tricks. Bob was born in New York, plays with the famous Boston Celtics. Leads them all in fast break play, and Koozie knows the champion way. Starts his day the Wheaties way. <whistles> Take Neil Johnston, another great champ from the East. Say Neil has been eating Wheaties since he was three feet tall instead of six foot eight. Grew up a long ways on them, didn't he? Mighty appetizing eating, and there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties, and you'll be do 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 and okay. Now, to continue, the wagon master had failed to consider the possibility that the morning sun might reveal his intention. As the rifle came to his shoulder, the shadow which had cast well out in front of him caught the Lone Ranger's eye. Instantly, the masked man drew a gun and pulled Silver into a half turn, which the rearing stallion made on his hind legs. The sudden maneuver threw Keller off his aim just as he fired. The bullet missed the Lone Ranger by inches. Then the masked man's colt spotted smoke and lead. Keller's Winchester flew from his hands, its wooded forearm shattered. As it fell, the masked man and Indian charged. Put your hands up, Keller. Yeah, they're up. Don't heal me. Hold over. Hold over. Easy. Why did you try to murder me? It isn't murder to shoot a mare, stowel, hold or an engine. We were criminals. We'd kill you. But we're honest men who want to protect the wagon train. Mister, I believe you. Cap Keller's a treacherous scoundrel. Ellen, you saw what he did. I saw it all, Clay. I'm sorry I said what I did to you. It's Captain Keller who's a coward. Ellen, I... Don't speak to me. I'm going back to the wagons. Get up. Get up. Keller, you should be dismissed from command of the train, but that's up to the people who engaged you. They'll hear all about him. Mister, I will admit I was mistaken about you and the redskin. I'm mighty sorry. I doubt it. Otto, pick up his Winchester. Uh, let me get it. Uh, what me do with it? Bring it along and drop it at the next turn in the trail. Uh, be savvy. Montelier. Come on, sir. Several hours later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, who had halted their horses after making a vain search for signs of Indians, watched a plume of dust move westward along the cutoff and knew that their warning had been futile. There was no hope in Tonto's voice as he said, Kimus Harry, maybe Apaches not know about wagons. I'd like to believe that. The dust they've raised is visible for many miles. Even though we haven't seen them, Indian scouts probably are following the train. And how we save it now? It seems to be an impossibility at the moment. But we may have a few hours left in which to find a way. Meanwhile, we'll continue to look for Apaches. One silver. As 
As another night closed in on Drybone Flats and the moon came up broad and bright, the Lone Ranger and Toto turned their horses toward Sweetwater Springs, where Keller had said that the emigrants and freighters would camp. A few miles from the springs, they sighted a curious rock. Some 20 feet high, it had the appearance of a huge barrel, for erosion had left hoops of harder stratum protruding from its rounded surface. Toto pointed to it. You must have a there, good place to look over flats. Yes, the rock has a flat top. The outcroppings on the sides make a natural ladder. Postal Postal Postal. 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 Several minutes later, the Lone Ranger reached the top of the rock. Hmm. An arrow lying on the center of the rock. That signal arrow. It got rag and bunch of hair tied to shaft. Well, what's the meaning of the rag and hair? Rag mean plenty loot. Hair tell number of white people to be killed. And it looked like bunch got more than hundred hairs in it. Then the scout must have seen the wagon train. Him did. Her a point straight to Sweetwater Springs. That where the him want war party to attack. I see. Better we take her away. No, Toto. We'll leave it here. Uh, me not savvy. This is my plan. Listen. A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Toto were ready to ride again. She was happy. Me hear plenty of horses coming. And the war party is getting close. We'll have to ride harder. We'll be seen. Uh, where we go? To the wagon train. Come up, scout. As the masked man and his friend neared Sweetwater Springs, Cap Keller held another conference with a courier from the outlaws' camp. Pedro was saying, Senor El Capitan, the pass is blocked. Good. Go back and tell the gang to be in the pass at daybreak. I'll hurry the wagons along. Perhaps the masked one has gone for help to find us, no? He may have gone, but there's no place where he can find help within a day's ride, so forget him. <laughs> Look there, senor. Get your hands up, both of you. You, Clay Rogers. Up, I said. Well, we're reaching, don't shoot. Oh, por Dios, no, no. Oh, this is how you pray, is it, Keller? Grab me, Pedro. Si. Why, as Pedro no, lowered no, his no. arms as though to grapple. Clay turned his gun no. toward him. The diversion gave Keller his chance, and he leaped forward. No, right. Too late, the inexperienced no. Easterner saw his mistake. His revolver blazed. <laughs> But the bullet plowed into the sand as the outlaw leader knocked down the gun with one arm and seized him around the body with the other. Hey, get that gun, Pedro. I have his help. Murder. Shoot him. Shoot him. Now I have the gun against his head. Stop that gun. Hold him. Hold him. Hey, I'm getting out of here. Stop that gun, I said. Oh, I'm shot. My shoulder. I... Look, Mr. Keller's on his horse. Stop, I... Keller. Try and stop me. Get up there. Hello. Look after the Mexican. Uh, he picks him up. I'll go after Keller. Come on, I am dying. Uh, you will not die till you hang. Clay. Clay, are you all right? Yes, Ellen. The masked man and Indian saved me from being killed by Cap Keller and that Mexican. But what brought you out here? Oh, I heard your shout and the shots. None of the men would leave the corral, so I came alone. Alone? Then you must care a little about me. Not a little, Clay. A lot. Uh, here, fella. He got wound bandaged. Bring him along, Indian. We'll all go to the corral. It was a half hour later when the Lone Ranger appeared inside the circle of wagons, where every man stood ready for battle. Noting that he had returned alone, Clay asked, Where did Keller go, mister? He headed straight for the Red Kettle Basin. I took a shortcut through a dry wash. When I rode out on level ground again, I found the war party of Apaches between us. I could do nothing else than return. And the killers escaped. I doubt it. Listen. From far out across the flats came the sound of gunfire, mingled with the unmistakable war whoops of Indians. That sounds as though Indians are making an attack. Yes, they are. They'll be occupied with that fight for a while. So you'd better start the wagon train back to the main trail. Men, I'm taking Keller's place. Hitch up and head east. <laughs> The next morning, when the wagon train had put many miles behind it, a halt was called. While the oxen rested, a detachment of United States cavalry spurred out of the flats from the west and drew rein behind the wagons, where the Lone Ranger, Toto, Clay, and others did duty as a rear guard. The young captain in command of the troopers studied the masked man intently for a moment, then smiled. Mister, I'm not going to ask who you are or why you wear a mask. I think I know. Perhaps you do, Captain. But there's one thing I don't know. 
That's why the Apaches attacked a gang of outlaws instead of these wagons. I'll explain what happened, but if you don't mind, I'd like to hear first how the fight went. It couldn't have had a better outcome. The Indians wiped out the bandits that lost so heavily in the battle that they fled back to the reservation with their dead and wounded. They're not likely to make any more trouble for a while. Did you find among the dead outlaws the body of a man dressed in a buckskin jacket and hand tool boots? I did, sir. I identified him as the leader. A notorious criminal known by such aliases as Cap Keller and El Capitan. Are you certain of that? I'm positive. I learned much about him on the border where my detachment was on duty until recently. Now, mister, let's hear your story. The Lone Ranger quickly related how he and Tonto had found the signal arrow. Then the officer interrupted him with a question. Did I understand you to say that the arrow pointed to the place where the wagon train had stopped for the night? That's right. Well... What did you do? First, we removed from the arrow shaft the rag, which indicated loot. Then we reduced the number of hairs to about 30, which approximated the number of the outlaws. I'm beginning to understand. Please go on. After that, we pointed the arrow away from the wagon train and straight toward the Red Kettle Basin where the outlaws waited. Now I get it. When Cochise and his warriors came along following the scout, they knew nothing about the wagon train. They interpreted the chain signal to mean that the scout had located a party of about 30 white men. Yes, Captain. As the arrow pointed, so they rode. When they found the bandits in Red Kettle Basin, they attacked. Mister, let me thank you for saving the wagon train. And I want to thank you on behalf of the Army. Well, my friend and I deserve no thanks. We're grateful for an opportunity to serve the people of the West. Captain, we have the one surviving bandit tied up in a wagon. He's called Pedro. Do you want him? Want him. Next to Keller, he was the most dangerous man in the gang. We'll take charge of him. Otto, our mission here has been completed. Adios, Miss Ellen. Adios. Adios, Clay. Goodbye, Adios, Mr. Captain. Adios. Come on, Come on. Come on. Captain, where do you suppose the masked man will go now? Who knows? I believe that the arrow of destiny points the way for the Lone Ranger. <laughs> feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.